Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of the Beards and Bikes Road Test Series where of course we review various motorcycles on the street, try to determine what kind of rider or buyer might be most well suited to these machines, compare the specs, the prices, all that kind of thing. And of course last week, speaking of comparisons, I rode this bike's best rival, you could argue, the Energica SS9 version of the EVA, a bike which I really loved, I love the styling of it. This one, despite being so similar, and certainly a great rival for it, is at the same time surprisingly different. Don't be fooled by the fact that just because they're both electric, they're probably the same. It really doesn't work like that. Just like how a Ducati V-Twin feels very different to a KTM V-Twin, likewise in the electric bike world, they're very different animals. And even though I said that I preferred a number of things about the Energica, I actually do prefer many things on this bike over the Energica as well. But I find it an interesting comparison to make because the bike's packaging, the marketing, even the styling clearly shows that they're aiming for different things, despite the fact that they are rivals. And to put that into, for instance, car terms for many of my regular viewers on the channel, I would describe the Energica as being more like something akin to a Maserati, or a, a Panos, or a Spyker. It's a little bit more out there, a bit more flamboyant, more focused on the style, still with great performance, but it wants you to know that it's electric. It wants to stand out and to be the star of the show. The Zero, on the other hand, and that goes not just for this one, but all of their models that I've seen, airs a little bit more on the edge of being like a, a Tesla, for instance. It's a little bit more understated. You notice it, you like it, you think it looks classy, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily have the same shouty kind of style that an Italian bike like the Energica would have. Now, Zero is based in California, and one of the significant advantages, I would say, of the company is they have a lot more models in the range, with a vast difference in performance. You've got some which are the equivalent to, like, a litre bike, like this one is. You've got some which are closer to, like, a 600, some which are even closer to a 250 or a 400, with both on- and off-road capabilities. And, of course, more recently, they even brought out their fully-fed sport bike style, SRS, which incidentally I hope to get the chance to ride in the future, especially to compare it to this one. Now the SRF is for the moment, not including that bike, pretty much the top of the tree when it comes to zero. And as I said, it's a great rival for the Energica, but at the same time the specs are very, very different between these two bikes. They both have a fairly similar spec on the surface of things. They've got around 110 or 120 horsepower, 190 newton meters of torque to 200. They're pretty close. Of course, both direct drive, just twist and go. And they're both big battery powered bikes. So they are by definition pretty heavy. But once you dig deeper into that kind of stuff is when you really start to notice the difference. And arguably the single most significant difference I would say between these two is actually that weight. Because yes, they are both heavy, but the difference between the two is vast. This bike, the SRF, weighs a fairly hefty 226 kilos. That's quite a lot, but at the same time for an electric bike, it's not too bad, considering how big the batteries are. On the other hand, the Energica weighs a borderline insane 282 kilos. That's literally 620 pounds to this bike's 500 pounds. That is a huge difference between the two, and even though this is still a heavy bike, it's still heftier than, for instance, a Ducati Panigale, at the same time, you can definitely feel the difference on the Zero. And the two main ways that you can feel the difference are, of course, through corners, but even to the point of just normal road speeds, I could still feel the difference in weight. And crucially, and this will certainly appeal to a certain type of rider, the way it feels in terms of acceleration. This bike feels faster than the Energica. And even though, as I said in that review, I personally love the way the Energica delivers its performance, I love the relentless torque and the just building, building, building acceleration that it has, this one to me feels like something that would appeal more to somebody who's never ridden an electric bike before. If you're maybe a little bit skeptical on it, maybe you've had a, like a Japanese bike in the past, naked or otherwise, this, I think, will feel a little bit more at home to you than the Energica might. The Energica's fairly out there. It's, it's an oddball approach, to some degree. This is a little bit more conventional. Not too surprising, it comes from California. Even the design is a little bit more like a conventional bike. And to me, I would say that the EVA is trying to show you that it's electric, whereas this is almost doing the opposite. It doesn't look like an electric bike 
really at all. It looks like it could easily be like a, a Yamaha MT. And speaking to the point of a Yamaha MT, that actually is what this bike reminds me of quite a bit actually. Even though it is faster than for instance an MT-07 by a considerable margin, it has a very Japanese kind of power delivery. And I like it for that. It's more frenetic, it definitely wants to play a lot more than the Energica, and I think that some of that is just because of the weight. That massive difference in weight means that even though this has less torque, and less power than the EVA, you don't really feel like it does. Both bikes do about 125 miles an hour anyway because of speed limiting, so you're not going to notice a difference there. In terms of acceleration, they're both just as quick as the vast majority of other naked bikes, under 4 seconds easily to 60. This one definitely feels faster though. The feeling of that rush of wind coming over you as you accelerate is far more visceral on the Zero than it is on the Energica. And to me, the EVA is the kind of bike where you can easily be going a lot faster than you realize because it builds so relentlessly and in kind of an understated way. Whereas with this one, you feel like you're going every bit as fast as you are. If you're doing 90, 100 miles an hour, it feels like you're doing 100 miles an hour. So it's very accurate. It's like a one-to-one -one thing in that sort of way. And I do love this bike for that. Now, in terms of pricing, as I mentioned in that other review, they're actually fairly similar. So I would argue that this test is actually a pretty brilliant one when it comes to comparing the two bikes, which I do plan to do in another video probably next week, in an actual breakdown, all of the facts, all of the specs, the pricing, to really definitively show which one is better for you. But for now, I will say this bike is, in my opinion, without question, the better motorcycle for people who are skeptical about electric bikes. It doesn't look flamboyant, it's not overly flashy, in fact, it could easily be a sleeper somewhat in the motorbike world. The handling is great. It does not feel anywhere near as heavy as it is, whereas the Energica definitely does, and I like it for that. I like that meatiness, personally. I know a lot of people don't, though. The acceleration is great. The performance is really good. And as I mentioned in that other review, there was actually one downside to either of these bikes when I rode them. Now, I mentioned in the Energica review that the biggest downside was an aesthetic one. It was the seat. I slid around on it quite a lot because of wearing like rainproof uh, textile style trousers. That wasn't an issue at all with this bike. I didn't even notice that. But what I did notice is the fact that it actually broke down. <laughs> so it's a, it's a significant downside compared to the other one. But at the same time, what I will say is it's a known issue. It's known to EEMC, the company who, of course, very grateful to, to let me ride these bikes. They know about it. They're actually working to fix this issue. And it's something which probably won't be an issue for much longer moving forward because it's a relatively simple fix from what I've been told. Something to do with, uh, I believe it was uh, a paste used in the bike which separates under certain vibrations and then basically any tiny amount of moisture in the atmosphere that gets into it causes the bike to basically do an emergency shutdown. So it's not a bad thing to do, the bike is doing what it should be doing, but of course it can be a little bit unnerving to have your bike shut down on you and suddenly seem like it has no battery left. That only happened once, I actually waited about 5 or 10 minutes and then started it up again and it was fine. So obviously it's just one of those things that it's a teething issue, you could say. And even though you can always complain about, well, bikes should be more reliable, even non-electric bikes break down all the time. So that, to me, is certainly not a killing blow to a machine. It's not like a catastrophic system failure or something like that. It's just something of a teething problem, if you will, while riding the bike. Apart from that, though, it was fantastic. And I would say that in terms of the riding feel, this is probably the superior of the two. And that's actually coming from someone who actually likes a lot of the things about the Energica more. Overall then, that's it for my thoughts on the Zero SRF. I would certainly say that if you are thinking about trying out an electric bike, maybe financing one, a lot of the things that I said in that other review definitely still apply to this one regarding the nature of an electric bike and the right kind of buyer, the right kind of person who will benefit the most from it. So if you haven't watched that one already, I would strongly recommend you do so, because it's not just talking about the Energica. I do touch on a lot of those important topics, such as commuting on the bike, financing the bike, and a lot of those reasons why these bikes could appeal to the right person more than a conventional bike sometimes would. 
but for now, that's it for my thoughts on the Zero SRF. I loved my time riding both of these bikes, and I certainly hope to get the chance to go back to the EEMC dealership and check out some more in future, maybe even the Zero SRS. And of course, stick around on the channel for my breakdown of the two bikes going head to head in terms of the spec to find out which one is objectively better, at least depending on the kind of buyer and rider that you are. So until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.